हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम बैक इन दिस वीडियो सेशन ऑफ फार्मास्यूटिकल ऑर्गेनिक केमिस्ट्री वन प्रैक्टिकल सेशन सो इन टुडे सेशन वी विल बी डिस्कसिंग अबाउट एन इम्पॉर्टेंट एंड क्वाइट सिंपल एक्सपेरिमेंट दैट इज द डिटर्मिनेशन ऑफ मेल्टिंग पॉइंट सो दिस एक्सपेरिमेंट इज एन पार्ट ऑफ आवर सिस्टमेटिक क्वालिटेटिव एनालिसिस ऑफ अननोन ऑर्गेनिक कंपाउंड and this is also an part of the separate experiment where the sample organic sample is given to you and you are supposed to identify what is that sample based on the melting point okay so let's get started we have discussed in the earlier sessions how we can apply the systematic qualitative analysis approach to identify the given organic compound so we know we can start with the preliminary test then we can find out which auxiliary elements are present in the organic compounds then we can perform the solubility test where we can segregate the compound into a different groups and then we can perform the chemical test for detecting the functionality or functional group which are present in the given compound and finally then we can perform the determination of physical constants so as i mentioned if you have a solid compound you can go for determination of melting point and if you have a liquid compound you can obviously will find out the boiling point okay so most of the experiments will end up at this particular stage and in some cases you may be advised to go for the derivative preparation where you will convert your compound into a suitable solid derivative by a appropriate chemical reaction and then again you will find out the melting point of the prepared derivative okay because usually in most of the cases we prepare a solid derivative so by knowing the physical constant like melting point or boiling point we can also identify the unknown compound okay so we have the literature melting points and boiling points so by performing the experiment we can match our experimentally determined melting point with that of the literature melting point okay so by matching we can get the idea about the possibility of the compound already by performing these series of test you could have arrived what that compound could be and additionally by finding the physical constant like melting point and boiling point it will really help you to get very closer and identify what could be the possible compound in the given sample okay so in today's session we will focus only about the determination of melting point so this video is a part of your systematic qualitative analysis as well as it can be considered as a separate experiment where the unknown solid compound is given to you and you are supposed to identify what that compound is okay so the aim of experiment will be to determine the melting point of given unknown organic compound or sometimes it can be a known compound where by finding the melting point you can also Uh, decide about the purity of the compound okay so we'll come to that so first we will see what is the principle behind this determination of physical constant or the melting point so first of all we should understand what is a melting point as the name indicates it is going to melt okay and it is a point or the temperature at which the solid state exists in equilibrium with its liquid state under an external pressure of one atmosphere so in brief we can summarize the melting point is the point at which the solid gets converted into a liquid state so that point where it is converting from solid state to the liquid state we can note down that temperature and that temperature is considered as the melting point of that substance and this melting point we can utilize for deciding the purity and the identity of the compound because this is a characteristic point so each compound 
will have its characteristic melting point and because of that we can use for identification and purity determination. So this is a physical property often used to identify the compound or to check the purity of the compound as I told you. So most of the pure solids they typically melt at very sharp defined point or we can refer it as a single temperature point or single temperature value. So it is very obvious when your compound is highly pure like primary standard so they will have a very sharp melting point that means they will start melting and within a fraction of second they will be completely converted from solid to liquid state. So that is called as a sharp melting point. Sometimes what happens the compound will start melting let's say at 110 and then it will be completely melted after the 2 or 3 degree Celsius interval. So there is a range okay. So this usually happens when your compound is impure. So there may be a minute amount of impurities like water or it could be some other uh, substances which are present uh, in the sample. So because of the impure sample it will be melting in a range. If it is a pure sample it will be melting in a one particular temperature. So you can easily identify whether your compound is highly pure or it will be having some impurities. Okay. So it is difficult though to find a melting point because very small amount of impurity can cause melting point to spread over a range of several degrees. Okay. So it depends on sample to sample and it also depends on what kind of impurities are contaminated with your original sample. So impurities usually what they do they will lower out the melting point of the substance because impurities are usually present in a minute quantity as compared to that of your original sample. So those impurities if they have the lower melting point than your original sample so obviously they will start melting first before your substance melt. Okay? So usually what they will do they will lower down your uh, melting point of the substance which you can identify easily and usually we can only obtain a melting range in between 2 to 3 degree Celsius interval like I told you 110 to 113 like that. So based on that we can judge the uh, sample. Okay? So usually whenever we report the melting point we have to very carefully observe at what temperature it starts melting and at what temperature it has been completely melt down. Okay? So based on that we can note down the temperature and we can report it usually in the range. Okay? Otherwise you can have the average also I will tell you in the coming slides. Then melting begins when the crystal structure of the sample it begins to collapse or form a liquid drops and ends when the entire sample is converted into a liquid form. So usually this melting point or the physical constant depends on various factors. So there are two major factors on which the melting point will be affected. The first point is the size of the molecule. Okay? So the size of the molecule matters when we talk about the melting point. So we can understand this by taking these example. So I have shown here the structure of N-butanol and the tertiary butanol okay, where the three methyl groups are attached here. Okay. Now you can see clearly there is a difference in the structural arrangement of these two compounds that is N-butanol and tertiary butanol and if you carefully observe these are the isomers of each other because if you calculate the molecular formula it is C4H10 and oxygen okay it is C4H10O so both have the same molecular formula but they differ in their structural arrangement okay so because of this the size of the molecule is going to change and because of that you can see the size of the molecule will play an important role in deciding the melting point so the n-butanol melting point is minus 90 degree celsius whereas the tertiary butanol have the melting point as 25 degree celsius okay by mistake it is written minus but it is 25 degree celsius so you can make out by changing the size and the internal arrangement of the atoms in a molecule 
though they are same molecular formula but because of their difference in the structural arrangement or the stereochemistry the melting point will differ so no two similar compounds though they have the same molecular formula they will not have the uh, exactly same melting point okay so no two compounds will exactly have similar melting point and this will actually help us to identify the compound based on their melting point the another factor is the force of attraction between the molecules okay so it is obvious whenever there is a stronger intermolecular interaction that will give or result in the higher melting point of that substance we can understand this with a suitable example so here you can see the butane so the butane molecular weight grams per mole is 58.1 and it usually melts at minus 140 to minus 134 degrees celsius and here we can easily make out in the butane there is a very weak van der Waal forces of interaction so because of the weak forces when you apply the heat the molecule can easily broken down into the liquid state okay so because of that the boiling point the melting point of this butane is this much okay it is very low when you see the structure of methyl propionate where there is a ethyl linkage COC okay so in this case we find there is oxygen atom and because of that there is a dipole dipole interaction so because of the dipole dipole interaction in the molecule of methyl propionate it holds the molecule relatively more tightly as compared to the butane and because of this dipole dipole interaction which are comparatively stronger than that of the van der Waal uh, forces of interaction stronger the interaction here and because of this you can see the melting point have increased it it is here from uh, minus 140 to minus 134 degrees celsius now it has shifted for this structure at minus 88 degrees celsius okay then when you move from methyl propionate to butyric acid where there is a hydrogen bonding okay oh uh, functionality is there then there is a carbonyl group also c double bond o here okay so here you can see it is a carboxylic acid butyric acid so it has a hydrogen bonding and because of the hydrogen bonding which is comparatively stronger than van der Waal force and dipole dipole interaction so because of this again the molecule will be having a very strong intermolecular interaction and it will be tightly held so you require higher temperature to melt it down so here it is melting at minus 7.9 degrees celsius then when we move from butyric acid to sodium butanoid where there is a ionic interaction okay you can see there is a ions sodium ion is there okay so it has a positive negative charge so it holds the molecule very tightly because of this ionic interaction and because of that it is quite difficult to break down this molecule by the application of heat so you can see this sodium butanoid have the melting point more than 250 degrees celsius so these are the factors which uh, really affect the melting point of your molecules what are the two factors one is the size of the molecule and second is the force of attraction between the molecules so this chart indicates the melting point of some of the common organic compounds okay for example phenol it will have a melting point of 42 degrees celsius alpha naphthol have 96 then benzoic acid 122 then you can see the urea that is 132 and so on okay so this is for your reference and as i told you the melting point is a characteristic value or it is a characteristic point for a particular substance okay now coming to the requirement to execute or carry out this experiment so what are the things you require so you require obviously the thermometer to check or measure the temperature at which it is uh, getting melted then you require some iron stand with the clamp which can hold the thiols tube then you require a thin walled capillary tube usually of 8 to 10 centimeter in length 
and its internal diameter uh, should be approximately 2 mm. Then you require a spatula to powder your sample in the crystalline form or uh, whatever form. Then you require the wire gauze, okay? you require a tripod stand, you require a thread, you require your substance. Then you require a Bunsen burner to heat the sample and you require a liquid paraffin. Okay. Then most importantly you should have to have the thiols tube. Okay. So there are various ways by which you can perform the melting point determination. Okay. So thiols tube is an important glassware which you have to use for determination of this melting point okay so the liquid paraffin should be placed in this tail tube so this yellow part is nothing but this is the liquid paraffin okay and you have to hang the thermometer containing a capillary you can see the end of the thermometer is having the capillary so both the ends of this capillary and thermometer they have the same level and this has been tied by the rubber or you can use the thread and there is a stopper here which can hold or which can hang this thermometer into this particular thiels tube so you should carefully uh, observe the level of the liquid paraffin in this tube and at what point we have to insert this thermometer containing the capillary which have your solid sample okay and you have to make sure the upper end of the capillary is not dipping inside the thiels tube so like this you have to attach your substance into the capillary okay now we'll see the experimental procedure so first what you have to do you have to powder your given substance or the organic compound so that it can go into the capillary then you have to take a capillary and you have to seal one end of the capillary by heating so you can just take the capillary in your hand and then one end of the capillary you can just hold on the uh, flame of the Bunsen burner so it will get melted and it will be closed down then you have to fill the capillary from the other end and you have to add the substance whose melting point you want to find out so fill the tube make a heap of the powder substance on a plate so that you can easily take your substance into the capillary then push one end of the capillary obviously the open end of the capillary tube into the heap some of the substance will enter into the capillary tube so what you can do now you can tap the sealed end of the capillary tube on the porous plate or uh, any uh, soft surface so that the powder will enter at the bottom where it has a seal okay and you have to fill the capillary with your substance approximately 2 to 3 mm of height okay then you can attach the capillary tube to the lower end of the thermometer using a thread then take the liquid paraffin in the thiols tube and attach to a stand with the clamp so you can hang or you can place the thermometer carrying the capillary tube attached at the bottom with the help of thread or you can use the rubber clamp also which you have seen in the earlier slide then you can heat the thiols tube slowly on the flame and when temperature is within 15 degrees celsius of the melting point of the pure substance if you really know what the substance is then you have to be very careful when it is reaching near to the actual melting point of that substance okay so you can reduce the flame and you can gradually increase the temperature okay so note down the temperature that is t1 this is the temperature at which your solid substance started melting and you have to observe it very carefully then again note down the temperature and refer it as t2 when it completely melt down okay and then you can calculate the average of this temperature that is you can uh, sum t1 and t2 and then you can divide by 2 so you will get the average temperature of this particular substance 
so this is how you can record your observation so note the temperature when the substance started melting refer it as t1 and when it completely melts down you can refer it as t2 and then take the average t1 plus t2 by 2 and report it in degree celsius so you can write the result the melting point of a given organic compound was found to be whatever temperature you are getting you can note down that let's say it is 134 degree celsius okay which is for urea then you need to take some precautions or you have to follow some tips for carrying out this experiment okay so this is a quite simple experiment but when you actually perform it you will find so many things you have to gather and you have to do it very carefully some minor mistakes okay like filling the capillary tube then maintaining the temperature so these some small mistakes may uh, give false results so what you need to do first important tip you have to use a dry and powdered sample for determination of melting point okay so make sure your powder is dry it doesn't have any absorbed moisture okay otherwise it will not give a actual melting point then you have to keep the lower end of the capillary tube and the thermometer at the same level okay so that we should take care then make sure upper end of the capillary is not dipped in the liquid paraffin okay so you have to attach the capillary uh, to the thermometer okay you have to see both should have at the same level from the end and the upper end of the capillary should not get dipped into the liquid paraffin which is there in your thiol tube okay then packing of the powder should be uniform without any large air gaps in between the solid particles okay so there should be a uniform packing of your substance which you are packing in the capillary tube by tapping so you make sure there, there should not be any air gaps between the powder and most importantly the liquid paraffin what you are using so it should be free from any water droplets because the liquid paraffin have very high boiling point it is uh, more than 300 degrees celsius and that's why the liquid paraffin is uh, preferably used for determining the melting point and the boiling point okay so if the liquid paraffin has some impurities or by mistake some water droplets are entrapped in the liquid paraffin so when you heat your liquid paraffin or the thiol tube they will start bumping okay and if the quantity of water droplets are more in the thiol tube then they will come out from the thiol tube and it can cause the accidents so these precautions you have to take while carrying out the determination of melting point so these are the references from which this material has been abstracted i hope you have understood this determination of melting point experiment Thank you for watching this video.